the effect of its policies make it illegal for governments to hinder the profits of big business. This is known as free trade. If there's one feature about the global economy, it's the companies have globalized. But we haven't regulated the global companies. And, and that's the change that we've got to put into this international system if we're ever going to get rules that are fairer to workers, fairer to the world's poor, fairer uh, to all of those who are affected by this international production system. People can't stand by. They can't be spectators when we're faced with forces like this. They join this movement and the movement starts to gather momentum. Already we've had some extraordinary successes. Um, we um, managed to stop the implementation of a crazy um, idea called the Multilateral Agreement on Investment, which would have allowed corporations to sue governments for the removal of any law which they didn't like. Now, that was being promoted, that idea, by the 29 most powerful countries on Earth. It was being promoted by all the major multinational corporations and all the big institutions, such as the World Trade Organization. And a ragged band of dissenters around the world managed to stop it. We beat them. And if we can beat that, we can beat anything. What is with the people is the fact that the corporations and the superpower are using more and more fabricated propaganda. People can now see through the spin. People know they cannot believe anymore what is said. And the people are starting to withdraw their support. They're starting to say, no, a government that only protects the Pepsi and the Coke and the McDonald. It's not our government. In rich countries like Britain, globalization is well advanced. The disastrous selling off of the railways and the creeping privatization of everything from health care to air traffic control. The financial pages celebrate a booming economy, yet one in five British children grows up in poverty. There are almost 10 million Britons living in poverty. The gap between the rich and the rest gets wider, and this is said to be a spurious cause. All over the world, millions of ordinary people are asking why they have no say in decisions that bring hardship to their lives. They don't accept the view of President Bush and Prime Minister Blair that there's no other way. In Britain, the fact that only 25% of the electorate voted for the Blair government is part of this great unease. Why, people ask, should we accept a system of winners and losers, a system that puts a dollar sign on every public service and almost every human value? Why not abolish the World Bank and the IMF and the World Trade Organization and replace them with genuine trade and development institutions that are democratically accountable. And why not cancel a debt that condemns nations like Indonesia to poverty and disease? These are dangerous times. The one superpower left in the world has made its ambitions clear. This is a document of the United States Space Command. It says, the globalization of the world economy will continue with a widening between haves and have-nots. It says only military dominance will protect America's commercial interests. Why should we accept this? Why should our children have to face these divisions and dangers? None of them is God-given. All of them can be changed.